in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. I'm uh, Muhammad Tahir Khairullah. I was born in uh, Aleppo, Syria, uh, back in the 70s. And then in 1991, we moved to the United States as new immigrants, uh, finished my high school career here, and uh, been in Prospect Park since then. What inspired me to get in the political field, I think, has something to do with our culture as uh, Middle Easterners. We're all, we always talk about politics, we fantasize about it, we analyze it, however, we don't get involved. And when I was a senior in high school, I remember walking back home and seeing a campaign sign that had an Arabic first name on it. Um, having arrived to the United States not too long before that, um, I found it very intriguing that there's an Arabic name on, on a political sign in the U.S. Um, from where I come from, political opportunities are uh, very limited if they exist. And I found that to be intriguing. And then after high school, I wanted to join the local fire department. And uh, they told me that I couldn't join because I wasn't a U.S. citizen. However, they said we can change the law locally which I found very intriguing, again, because uh, w where we come from, a, a king or a president has to change the law. So there's a power in the hands of the people. So that was the second uh, seed that was planted in my mind. The third one was when actually members of the fire department, after I joined, several years later, told me I should run for office. And I found then maybe I do have local support uh, but at that point I wasn't a US citizen yet so I waited I be, until I became a citizen in the year 2000 and exactly one year after in 2001 I ran for office oh the first campaign was the most interesting campaign it was um, 2006 uh, so I was on the council for four years already and um, the my predecessor uh, stepped down because he moved out of town so I received the support of uh, my colleagues on the council to take over the mayor position in November of 2005. However, um, uh, some people were not happy. Uh, as a matter of fact, a, a letter uh, went, uh, was sent around town uh, calling me a traitor living amongst us. And that was the first sign of anti-Muslim bigotry sign uh, that uh, was utilized against me. Um, the people on the council, so beyond it, they supported me to run for mayor. But then, you know, when I declared my candidacy in uh, April of 2006, um, different factions put two candidates against me in the primary. Uh, they put a Muslim candidate trying to take away Muslim votes from me and they put a Latino candidate trying to take the Latino votes away from me. But, you know, I think at that point I have established uh, good credibility within the first few months. Um, I hit the ground running with my agenda. Uh, I had good alliances um, uh, locally and extended county-wise. Um, had the support of the community, had support from, from others. Uh, it was a battle where I had to take two months off from work uh, to campaign door to door, uh, morning and night, um, and uh, I, I won the primary, and and uh, you know it was then smooth sailing ever since. We need as as Muslims to reach out to others. We can't be in our little corner, uh, you know, doing our things and not reach out to the, our extended community. So building alliances definitely helped me uh, succeed. Uh, but the other thing is I had a clear agenda that I introduced to the people and I started implementing right away. There was no fluff, there was no you know, uh, playing around. We just had a very clear agenda, we started implementing and, and now 
you know, despite the attempts to run against me, I, I thank God, alhamdulillah, I have very good and broad support from the community. So people see beyond the attacks, whether based on religion, based on race, people see beyond it because they see my service. You know, I think if we get involved, people see beyond our name, uh, beyond our ethnic background, beyond our religious beliefs, as long as we provide good customer service to them. However, I think right now, after the inauguration of Trump, um, it emboldened some people to think that they can use the race issue again, the religion issue again. Um, the latest issue happened this June where a Board of Education member, uh, while I was speaking in a public session at the Board of Education meeting, uh, said, this is an orderly meeting, this is not Sharia law. Um, so, so, you know, to her to feel that she could say this to the mayor of the town uh, tells me that the Trump era has emboldened people who were hiding in the past. Um, fortunately for us, we don't have too many uh, examples uh, like her in Prospect Park here. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, they use it now more in political campaigns. Last year, we ran an Indian Hindu for council and some people, uh, because of his skin tone and because of his last name, start spreading rumors that the mayor is replacing uh, non-Muslims with Muslims. Now, the guy wasn't even a Muslim, but you know, the, when, w there are those who play on the tones and, and the fear of, of people. But the positive change was the fact that there are many non-Muslims who are actually standing with us. So this is an opportunity to build alliances and build bridges based on mutual interest, not based on our own interest. I think it's an opportunity for us to build a mutual interest between us and, and others and have these opportunities become long-lasting relationships. Um, right now, many Muslims are running for office. I mean, it is very exciting. And I share with them, obviously, you want to run because you want to protect your civil rights, but you need to run because you're a member of a community. You need to run because you're running to serve that community. Uh, no one should be running just to serve the Muslim communities. Then be, they become the Muslim candidate serving Muslim interests. And, and that's not what we want. We're Americans and we want to serve the larger society. People who think that Islamic values are not aligned with American values are absolutely wrong. I mean, they should look at the many examples of uh, successful American Muslim entrepreneurs, um, doctors, engineers, police officers. Um, you know, we help maintain the quality of life. We help maintain uh, the American system. Um, just because there's a few individuals who are brainwashed and who cause destruction doesn't mean uh, it's the same thing for, for everybody else. There are millions and millions of Muslims here. If we were, if our values were not in sync with American values, we would cause major disruption in the system. But we're not. We're moving the system along. We're enhancing the system uh, with your, our entrepreneurship, with, with uh, um, our employment in different organizations. I mean, people look at us as uh, valuable employees, uh, good neighbors. So we're enhancing any, any place we go to. The fact that there are a small percentage of people, again, that are not consistent with society doesn't mean that the majority are like them as well. Uh, and the media has been doing a bad job uh, <clears throat> not highlighting uh, successful Muslims uh, when they take every single opportunity to highlight every uh, 
Muslim who's I think mostly are are are, are sick mentally who, who disrupt or cause harm to others. The advice I would give young Muslims who want to get into politics is to get involved in their local communities. Again, you cannot take the value of people trusting you for who you are based on your action. We could go around and say we're good people as much as we want, but a person who doesn't know a Muslim probably knows what media said about Muslims. So the only way we could change the stereotype is by going out there and showing people who we really are. Uh, caring neighbors, uh, uh, caring individuals about larger society. Um, that only changes through action, not through words. So I urge them to be uh, involved in their local communities. I think that they should look for every opportunity to volunteer, uh, whether it's coaching, library, tutoring, fire department, ambulance, look for opportunities to volunteer. Then, you know, should they seek office later on, I think people will support them based on the merit of their actions. Uh, and they'll look at them as servants, not politicians.